In this video lecture, I am going to uh, demonstrate uh, the theory of Amazon Web Services. So, Amazon Web Services is a software developed by Amazon to provide cloud hosting in different way, uh, metrics. So, the first thing we will see is EC2. EC2 stands for E for Elastic and C for Computer. So, like there is a kernel for Linux, it is a central for uh, and uh, uh, central node for uh, that administers the entire MPWS uh, st uh, stack. So, it can be used in both Windows and uh, Linux operating system. Uh, uh, what is then hypervisor? So, hypervisor is a program that is used to uh, install and run multiple virtual machines on a computer. And those virtual machines can be different. So you can have two Linux uh, servers on a Windows hosting. So th that is a hypervisor. So virtual private server is a, 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 is, a is a server which is having a private IP address and that is not a uh, uh, in the DNS records. So it, it creates virtual private servers. So the, the IP address suppose I am having connected to a virtual server server like uh, uh, 102.2.2.2 .2. so that uh, is uh, you can say the uh, the virtual private server address and that is not a, 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 a public IP for address it is not available in the DNS record so that is what is virtual private servers so the creation first the use and the management the, the three things are important I will just make it bold and enlarge the size. See, you can see uh, creation. I will creation, use, and management of virtual private servers. Yeah, and running the Linux or Windows. So this is the important thing, it supports both Linux and Windows and a hypervisor is there. So now the features are there are a lot of data centers on Amazon worldwide. So there are very maybe in thousands or lakhs, I don't know. But they are and they are spread evenly in every continent. So suppose in Asia, Southeast Asia there are ten um, data centers then in Europe there will be 10 or 20 like that so they are fault tolerant because they have backup of data they can store redundant data and they are highly scalable so your data is suppose increasing day by day multiple times so suppose I have my data is changing 70 million rows per um, you can say month so what this elastic plastic will do is it will el elongate the memory so it will compute the the requirements and it will just extend its uh, uh you can suppose i have 20 bytes 20 or okay, 20 gb of data but suddenly uh it has monitored it and uh, I, I, the user has told, told to increase the uh, data so it, what it will do is it will use the elasticity property to use the same IP address but for more uh, storage. So that storage has the same IP address that was before that uh, uh, addition of that elastic, elastic uh, com uh, compute cloud. Means so I want to say that like see this suppose I had uh, 20 GB I have taken a plan of 20 GB. But what is happening is EC2 applications has given me a warning that your data is uh, crossing the is about to cross so it is uh, increase so that at that time I will uh, increase the elastic crown so it is on demand so since it's, uh, that's it is highly scalable so from 50 suppose I monthly data again I'm saying that it increase by 70 million rows so it is highly scalable. 
extends to redundant data so that is a fault tolerant and a fault uh, yeah fault tolerant both are same so now we will go to the queue service queue service is basically a transaction service and uh, you a transaction manager uh, which is usually covered is required to ensure that the messages are not lost when the component is unavailable so suppose my system is uh, due to some issue i am not able to uh, get get input from user so what it does is it just queues the uh, request http request or any request suppose ftp request so it queues it uh, and up and starts a transaction and what happens it whenever and the messages are uh, uh, whenever the and uh, 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 server is coming back into its normal state it ensures that the messages are sent to that uh, this, uh, server uh, which will there in the queue so that is simple queue service so what so what it is based for distributed applications so suppose I have an e-commerce system and uh, my system is uh, you can say uh, it has uh, so, uh, is uh, working slowly so what i will do is i will just use this sqs insert that uh, query into sqs so it pop, i will pipeline it and after the uh, so, uh, the transaction uh, manager realizes that the uh, yeah, uh, queue is uh, is this ready it will uh, uh, start its work and then it will close the transaction after closing the transaction it will either roll back or uh, commit so whenever there is one error, it will commit, and when there is error, it will roll back. That was about Amazon Simple. The so next is Amazon Simple Notification Service, also known as SNS. So notifications are mm, uh, updates to a, a app. Suppose I am using WhatsApp, and I have got ten new messages, then it will show in the in uh, in the uh, title uh, in the main screen that. Uh, 10 messages are to be read. So what this 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 called as notification, and this and the uh, it is called as push notifications. So what happens is in Amazon and SNS, it's the, the main task is it gets messages from app. Suppose I have sent uh, hi how are you, so it got gets that message and it delivers that message to other users. That is called a push notification server, and this is implied by Amazon SNS. So, uh, suppose it uses pooling. Uh, all the, if uh, it provides a method for triggering action. So, suppose I uh, have uh, as have a setting. So, uh, I will let uh, give me a notification after three hours that I have not seen the message. So what it will do is every three hours it will trigger action, and that you have not seen this uh, message. Please see. But there is one more like this is a one method. But the second method is a push notification server can poll, so it can check after five five minutes that uh, if any new messages uh, is to be delivered, every any new message is to be read. So that is about simple notification service. In the previous, I forgot to say. Yeah, here this is the important word. It is a transaction system. It is a transaction system that is work for distributed systems. Then, uh, yeah, that, that is in this. Again, I forgot to highlight. It provides a method for triggering actions that we saw on pooling. One of the so we are published message from our navigation and device. Okay. So that was about simple notification server. Yeah, so I just uh, 
So what is Amazon Cloud Watch? Cloud Watch is a software that sees like how the traffic is like if uh, from which uh, area the traffic is more what ha what are the parameters for latency what are the metrics then uh, it's basically it's the name is cloud watch it just watches the uh, main status so the first thing is that in Amazon uh, cloud watch it monitors that if any data has been lost then if any data has to be added, upscaled, then if there is a lot, um, a lot of I.O., there is a lot of processor demand. So you see here, you can see, uh, the, the metrics of the cloud watch may be to scale. Auto scaling is a, a technique in which, in which, uh, According to a particular metric or set of views, you can automatically scale an EC2 site base. Suppose in my cloud watch, I got a uh, uh, thing that this database uh, is uh, having more, more and more data, so it will require a la large space in the future. So what it tells is, it tells the uh, EC2 instance that uh, you please scale the uh, web website. Uh, the web storage and uh, based on the based on a set of rules. So auto scaling is part of Amazon Cloud One is available in, as new additional chart. So now we have see the environments, performance metrics, and then uh, auto scaling based on based on the metrics. Uh, it can score automatically. So you can scale automatically based on set of rules. Then it is available at no additional time. So that was our cloud world. So Amazon Machine Instance is an instance of the uh, virtual machine. That is, it's a. Um, you can see that suppose I have a. Uh, Linux server. It is uh, deployed on the Amazon or any uh, 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 so not on uh, any other. I have two servers uh, uh, on Amazon. So each server is called the Amazon Machine Instance. So now I will just yeah. And now what is load balancing? Suppose a particular server is uh, having lots of activity, and one server is having no activity. So uh, what we will do is we will transfer some data from one server to other server and tell uh, and take a backup of it and tell him to work in uh, parallel. For that there is a load balancing. So elastic load balancing is a feature of uh, Amazon. So it can uh, suppose one one instance is uh, using more power, more processes. Uh, uh, time so it is uh, not allowing other processes so what uh, processes to ha have the time so what to do uh, here is you can send a signal to block that uh, that uh, time taken by one machine and this load the time which is we got so that's uh, machines the load balancing feature can detect what the instant is failing and it can lead to topic to a healthy instant so that what this is suppose uh, mm, uh, I I want to do some uh, uh, I want to uh, uh, get a Ajax uh, response. So what this load balancing will do is it will just uh, transform the data from one node which is heavily traffic to another node which is less traffic. So uh, uh, even if we have to change the area zones so from Asia to Europe. So that also uh, load balancing can do. Uh, so uh, what what happens is, yeah. So uh, one one feature is 
Suppose I'm, I have used CloudWatch and I have detected how many requests are there per hour and how much latency is there per hour. So that, according to these metrics, uh, elastic load balancing happens. So suppose for website number A, the request count is 100. And, uh, and for the database server, the request is 20. I will just give some server to the uh, processor, which is 90%. Uh, so that is metric request count and request latency as a metric. So it, it can zero the traffic to healthy usage. One in other AWS zones. That was about uh, load balancing. So now we will go to the uh, simple storage system. Simple storage system, everybody knows it. Is an online backup and storage system. So suppose I want to store my images and store videos as a S3. S3 has also backup and it can be scaled up very really easily. Then uh, next is e EBS Elastic Block Store. So in Amazon Elastic Block Store, it creates a, a virtual disk or block level storage devices that can be used by Amazon machine instances. So here you can see here it is a block level. And it is used for creating virtual disks. So now simple DB. Simple DB is a structured data store that supports indexing and data queries. To both S3 and EC2 and S3. So now uh, a simple DB shows data in buckets and uh, it doesn't require the creation of a database schema. So uh, and this design allows simple DB to scale easily. Amazon relational database. So this allows us to create instances of the MySQL database that is the most lightweight database in mostly or uh, commonly used database the, uh, and with Oracle. It supports uh, the instances of MySQL database. So MySQL is stored in the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, Perl. And inclusion of this service allows the develop to, developers to change to other servers, change their source code and uh, change their uh, model independently of the uh, controller and view. So RDS provides software batching and software updation. Suppose uh, this, there is an uh, updation in the software, so it automatically updates. So database backups and database scaling. So this is, scaling means you can, uh, suppose uh, there are 70 million rows, but uh, you want uh, and uh, suppose I send a request, so it automatically increases the database size. So uh, it is used for websites, basically. Websites, then data driven services, and in the LAMP stack, you can say batching, backups, and scaling. Batching, backup, scaling. This is important. And what happens is because of the using MySQL database, we don't have to invest in this technology. So we don't have to buy MySQL server client and any other workbench and everything. We don't require, we don't require community server. We can do it with Amazon console only. So that was about Amazon relational database. No, Amazon CloudFront. In Amazon CloudFront, we provide a content delivery system which is distributed in many physical locations that is Asia, Africa, Europe to gain access to data to faster data transfer speeds and lower latency. So now I see suppose I have I have a website I am using the script there I am using HTTPS so this is ajax.google API so in this URL we, that we include for jQuery, like that Amazon CloudFront 
has um, uh, you can say cache. Cache means a, a fast memory store that that is updated every time the RAM is updated, and it stores the most like uh, most probable data that will be uh, asked. So there are two things: cache hit and cache miss. Suppose I I have a content delivery system that is jQuery. So I, I have uh, put a script, but that was not in the cache. So it will insert that data in the cache. So next time when I want this, it will take it from the cache. So it will not go to the physical uh, location bucket of Amazon. So it has fast data transfer because of this. It has fast data transfer speed and lower latency. It is a main thing is the content delivery system that is and it caches data. So that was our Amazon problem. So now we'll see the business services. The first is the Alexa Web Information Service. Then it is A to AWS Amazon Associates Web Service. Then Amazon Dev Pay. Then MapReduce. Then Dark. Then MFA. And flexible payment service, fulfillment web service, PPC virtual private cloud, and premium support. So now we will go to the miscellaneous services. The first one is Alexa web information service. So, what it does is it collects and exposes information about the structure and traffic patterns of websites. So what, uh, what is the structure? Suppose there is a strip tag and there is uh, many uh, link tags and th th there is a meta tag. So it collects and exposes the information about the structure and traffic patterns. Traffic pattern means website uh, um, and traffic analysis like from which country the traffic is coming more at what time the traffic is coming more like that. So that is Alexa Web Information Services. Now A2 is A2 stands for Amazon Associate Web Services. So Amazon is a machinery that is is like uh, you can say it provides met uh, a, um, a complete analytical uh, data for uh, Amazon's fast data. So uh, it provides a full analysis. To how, on how to uh, um, interact with the Amazon's data. Now we move to DevPay. So DevPay is simple. It is a billing and account man management service that can be used by businesses that run applications on top of AWS. Suppose I have an e-commerce website which is built on top of AWS. I, I will get the billing and account management service that is DevPay. Then you can uh, uh, get the refund in the Edition of account, then the reimbursement and everything else. Second, the third, uh, fourth is the Elastic Map Reduce. In Elastic Map Reduce, we perform machine learning, association rule mining, then file analysis, scientific and bioinformatics search. So, what is the data mining requires uh, processes to use the map reduce property of algorithms uh, to uh, Mind the data so it can be used for Hadoop as well. So, what happens is elastic map reduce is a mechanism, is a framework based on top of Java and it's provided by Hadoop uh, that, that analyzes data parallelly and then after analyzing data, it merges the data and, and it sends the output. So, it, the data the, uh, is present in backup and um, over the nodes. So the primary server uh, distributes the task and secondary server returns the data back to the primary server and the primary server works on the uh, data received. So that is merging and pruning and that is elastic map reduce. So uh, it is elastic so it, it is scalable. What is TURG? It is uh, a means for human researchers or consultants to help solve problems of contextual or temporary Basis. So uh, that is the term. So MFA. Now we go to multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is an authentication uh, 
be clouded by O or 2.0. That is open authentication 2.0 uh, um, uh, to prevent the phishing attack. So you uh, you are on authorization. It, uh, it uses NFA. What happens is NFA image image to side login. So it uh, be login. First we register. So what happens if we register? When we register and uh, when we register, uh, there, uh, there, there are uh, uh, one more step, so that is to identify your phone number. So what it does it is send the OTP to the uh, uh, to the uh, user, and once and once the uh, OTP has been correctly sent, then uh, Multi of uh, factor, two factor authentication is established. So that that is done using Amazon. So then, what is flexible payment system? Payment transfer system that provides access to our developers to charge Amazon's customers for their purchases. That is through ads or through sponsored links or through uh, some other things like a payment transfer infrastructure. That provides access for developers to charge Amazon's customers for their purchases. Now, who is this? Suppose I want a premium account. I, uh, the premium account is managed by the flexible payment system. And it is flexible means it is comes in various varieties like 2 hour plan, 4 hour plan, 20 day plan, 40 day plan, and this, this plan, A plan, B plan. Okay, it's a payment infrastructure. Uh, and transfer infrastructure that was access for developers to charge Amazon's customers for their purchases. Suppose I have written a book and I want uh, to, uh, I'm a developer and I want Amazon's customers for, to purchase. I will use flexible payment system. Uh, one example of flexible payment system is the one hour, one, is the uh, first one hour trial, one month trial. Now, what is fulfillment web service? Fulfillment web service allows merchants to fill orders through Amazon.com's fulfillment service and handle the physical delivery of items on the merchant's behalf. So if I want, I am a merchant and I want my 10 saris to be delivered in 10 days, I can do this in Amazon's fulfillment service. A virtual private cloud is a cloud in which there is a virtual IP addresses and it, uh, it can be scalable like cloud. And premium support and technical support consulting business. Thanks for watching.